oh, these brands fell off, these brands, like what happened? They used to be so big and now we don't talk about them anymore. Those brands need to be worried, <laughs> okay? What is up guys? Welcome back. Does this look kind of familiar to you guys? If you don't watch my vlog channel, you might not know. I spent three hours this last Saturday repainting this room so that I could have the same background color that I have had for years now and I'm so happy that I did it because that old paint color was like the exact same color as my skin. It was so hard to edit and now there's contrast and I think it's so much more helpful to see detail. Anyway, today we're going to be playing with the last remaining vestiges of Becca Cosmetics. It has come to my attention through a lot of very frantic messages from you guys that they are shutting down in September. And I was like, well, I guess that means I'll just have to stop using their products on my channel. And then a few of you pointed out, well, we've got until September, it might be valuable to do a video where you talk about the things that you would suggest snagging before they disappear forever. Now, I did look around online and a lot of this stuff is sold out in various places. Ulta seems to have the largest stock right now of the things that I'm going to be mentioning today, but the Skin Love Foundation seems to be pretty scarce. I'm not sure if they're going to release more, you know, to stores like restock and stuff, even though they're shutting down, they probably still have stock that they want to sell off and stuff. So keep an eye out. I'm going to try and throw as many links as I can below if I can find them in different places. but. I do have some favy faves that I'm going to share with you guys. And we're also going to talk about what I think that this implies for the beauty industry and where it's going right now. So I'm gonna move y'all in and we will put some makeup on my face and chat about that. Hello, yay, we're back to being really close to my face again. Detail, we love detail. Okay, I have too many complexion products from Becca to put on my face all at once. And I will spare you guys my unpopular opinion of the Becca Zero. I love this. If you're unfamiliar with this, it is a virtual foundation, meaning it is clear and it has a texture to it that some people have compared to a mattifying primer. There's really nothing to that swatch, maybe up against my other hand. Does that help? Is that helpful? It just is cooling and refreshing on the skin. It feels really, really nice. A lot of people think this is really stupid because it's literally clear. It's kind of like a big jar of nothing, but I thought that it was, I thought that it was nice. I'm gonna get my hair out of the way here. My hair has become a thing I have to keep tied back all the time because my baby has the stickiest, grabbiest little hands and he's so fast all of a sudden. We went from being like, here, this is how you hold things and like opening his hand to help him grasp things to like, I lean down to kiss him and he grabs both sides of the underneath of my hair and he's just like, so that's where we're at right now. Okay, I have two complexion products that I would absolutely recommend from Becca and it is the Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint. Yes, doing the most with that name. And I have the Becca Skin Love Weightless Blur Foundation. I picked this up at the Sephora sale in just November, November, December, because I missed it so much. I had stopped using it during clean routine 2019 and it expired and so I didn't have it anymore, but I missed it. And I am apparently not alone because this again is really, really hard to find right now. I saw it in medium to deep shades, but the light shades are pretty much all sold out. But if you are more deep complex you could be in luck. So I'm going to start with Luminary One in the Light Shifter Doing Tint. And as far as shimmer goos go, this is a really, really beautiful one. I like it very much. I actually like the tone of Luminary One, the shade that I got better than the tone of the Glow Lust that I got from Sam Ravindal's brand, Auric. I like the Auric formula better because it's a little bit more smoothing, but this is still so beautiful and it is more affordable. Isn't that nice? That's nice. And this just adds a really nice slip and a tiny bit, a tiny bit of grip. I'm not really sure. Mostly just a nice texture to the skin and then I will selectively apply the pigment foundation. So I really like the Skin Love because, well, the name sort of implies what we're going for here. And it really does have a beautiful, it has like a good amount of coverage, but it has a beautiful skin mimicking finish to it. It's very sad to me that we're losing Becca. Although <laughs> I will admit 
that A, I've been a little bit confused by their target demographic lately. I feel like especially with the last few releases, these sort of like low coverage or zero coverage complexion products and stuff, it seems like they've sort of been trying to target teenagers or you know young 20 somethings and not to say that you can't use those products if you have more mature skin but their entire advertising campaign their marketing was very much targeted towards that age group and i was like well that's really limiting because i think that there are a lot of people who would actually really want to use that product but also i really feel like you know as soon as somebody said like i started getting the emails and the stuff on instagram and stuff from people saying that they were shutting down i realized how i have taken this brand for granted and it made me start to think about other brands that we take for granted and that maybe take their own success for granted a little bit because they've kind of been mainstays in the industry for so long but the conversation is shifting as far as what the customers want not just from products but from brands and their public identity so Let's next go in with the product that I cannot fail to mention because it is my absolute tippy top favorite Becca product of all time. And it is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And if you can find this, it only comes in two shades, but if you can find this, pick it up because it will last you forever. I've had this thing for, God, a year and a half. I use it all the time. Kyla worked her way all the way through one on her project pan and I was genuinely extremely impressed <laughs> but yeah you can use this in place of concealer for a really really like light coverage complexion situation like i'm sorry a light coverage camouflage situation and it works really beautifully to make it look like you're not wearing any makeup but it will you see it kind of just it kind of just sort of covers but it's not a, a shade match and it's reflective and it's just beautiful I really, really love this stuff. I've heard a lot of controversy around it because of the limited shade range. I would definitely have encouraged them to expand the shade range if they were expanding anything at all. And I've also heard some skepticism from people around whether or not they actually think this is true. I know that Becca is very sad. You know, they're very sad and they're very remorseful. All their messaging online is like, wow, thank you so much. You know, it's been 20 years of whatever and you know, we're so grateful for you as our customers and stuff. But a lot of people are really skeptical because it is an Estee Lauder brand. They were acquired not that long ago. And that for that reason, people are like, is this a stunt? You know, are they kind of selling off and then they're gonna kind of come back like triumphantly, like, ooh, look, you know, back from the dead kind of thing when they were never really planning on going completely away. I really don't have like an opinion on that per se, but it is a very interesting kind of hot take. And I don't blame anybody for skepticism in the market in the industry right now because the beauty industry, it, it, we, we just know that we don't know. That's the biggest thing that we've learned the past year is that there's just so much that no one's telling us. And so skepticism is uh, very justified. I'm going to powder with the Becca Hydra Mist. This was a fave for me for a very long time, but I don't necessarily recommend this product because it only comes in this one kind of like in-between beige shade. And it does kind of, I don't know, it makes it like flattens the makeup out where I'm trying to highlight it sometimes. I used to really love this because it kind of reminded me of the old prescriptives magic powder y'all remember that and it's because it's supposed to feel kind of wet on the skin it's like a water powder you know um but it loses that magic pretty quickly <laughs> you know it's only for the first couple of months that i feel like the container actually maintains that it has this little sticker you're supposed to keep pasted down but i felt like mine kind of lost its magic pretty quickly but also even though i think i worked my way all the way through one like you can see it just makes it look a little bit dark like it has pigment to it and that means that it's also going to look too light for people too so like why not put out multiple shades instead of being like oh it's translucent but it only works for like medium skin tones you know so I don't necessarily recommend that one. So a product that I do have from Becca that we won't be using today is the Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer. It's blue. I don't really understand this product. I bought it because I was doing like a whole face of clear makeup <laughs> from Becca. It's right there, there's the swatch, wow, right? It's supposed to kind of wake up your under eyes. I'm not sure if it's cooling or anything. A lot of people swear by this. I've never really noticed a difference when I use it. I'm just gonna throw on a little bit of a contour. This is out of my little drugstore Koki palette. That's what she looks like. They sent this to me a while back and it is pretty much the only 
powder contour that I own. And it comes in two colorways. Unfortunately, this one's called Universal. So it's like they did a universal one and then they exposed themselves because they put out another one that's a little bit deeper. And Sally's only carries the Universal one and uh, you can get both of them on their website, on the Koki website. Something that I regret not getting into sooner are Becca blushes. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just bank on the fact that they would have the same beautiful texture that the highlighters do, that kind of, you know, perfect amount of sparkle. But this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Luminous Blush in the shade Camellia. And this came as a sample when I ordered a bunch of other stuff a while back and I just never used it, but it's gorgeous. It's just a really, really beautiful bright pink, not even necessarily a shade that I feel like I would reach for. But when I was looking online, there are a ton of these, but they're all kind of in different shades, kind of smattered across different websites. So good luck. I couldn't find Camellia necessarily, but the Shimmering Skin Perfector formula of the blush is gorgeous. I'm sure it would work in just about any shade that is flattering on you. It's so pretty and it adds just the right amount of luminosity. I don't like usually a sparkly blush, but this isn't sparkly really. It just adds a really beautiful texture. And I think that that's kind of what happened, right? This is something that Wayne Goss was talking about a while ago on his channel, how Becca started out before they were sold or anything like that as a line that makeup artists reached for a lot because they had really, exhaustive shade ranges in their complexion products and that he always really appreciated them for that. But then they just kind of became the highlighter company, which is totally fine too. Their highlighters are really awesome. And a lot of brands have tried to mimic their formulas for better or for worse over the years. And I will really miss their, their highlighter formula. Although I do have this in the wrong shade. I am going to use it just because I have it, but this is opal and it's a little bit too deep for me. Regardless, he talked about how they kind of lost their way since being acquired and it's like they don't really have the same level of inspiration and they have been kind of skating along right on an old identity and i feel like that's kind of the strength and weakness of brands right now and what's separating the wheat from the chaff in the sense that the conversation like i said has changed so much over the last year about where people want to put their next dollar uh, in the beauty industry god help us let's do something different on my eyes today i'm gonna go in with some brilliant eye brighteners from Thrive today and just do a look on my eyes because I'm just desperate for something different. You guys are going to see, I guess you've already seen my Janessa Myricks video. That was where I like hit the wall on a pink sparkly eye. I was like, I can't do this anymore, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that I put you through that. So uh, this is the shade Muna. It's just such a beautiful one and done. Such a pretty texture. So yeah, it made me start to think about other brands that I feel like we, we talk about having fallen off, right? There are a lot of those videos out from veterans of YouTube and veterans of the beauty industry. And they'll be like, oh, these brands fell off. These brands, like what happened? They used to be so big and now we don't talk about them anymore. Those brands need to be worried, <laughs> okay? Tarte can only skate by on shape tape for so long, you know? Too Faced can only skate by on Born This Way for so long. And people aren't excited about scented eyeshadow palettes or, uh, you know, the next, <laughs> the next all-in-one face palette for white skin tones, you know, the way that these brands used to be able to get away with. I think that it's kind of a good thing in some senses. Like I am not here to, you know, wish away anybody's dream. I don't want to, you know, wish anybody's failure, but I do think that the nature of the conversation has made it so that brands really are not allowed to not have a stance. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that we should demand transparency from brands. I think that that's one of the biggest complaints that we've had this past year is that the brands who we find out bad things about, we tend to kind of skewer them, right? And when we compare them to the brands that we say that we do like, a lot of times, unless there's some kind of, you know, new indie brand that we are very, very aware of, like the owner and the motivations behind it, and it's like made to be inclusive and stuff like that, the older brands that aren't getting skewered 
a lot of times it's just because we don't hear anything about them. We don't know anything about them. They kind of back away. They post their black square on the internet and then, you know, they do the right things. They give money to the right people, but we don't really know who's behind the brand in really any consequential way. And I think that we should talk about it more because I, I, that's where it kind of falls off for me and like why I haven't been part of that conversation as much is because I don't feel like it's an even playing field. Like when we talk about a brand who's done something not that great, but they've also done a bunch of really great things. And then we compare it to something that we, a brand that we know nothing about, that's really, really unfair. And I'm not necessarily saying like, oh, all brands deserve the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely not. I think that we as consumers deserve more transparency from the brand so that we can make the decisions for ourselves. And I think that that's kind of what people have gotten exhausted of in the industry lately is just that, and it's not even so much that they've actively decided not to buy from certain brands, it's that they have actively decided to buy from other brands. And those brands are the ones that are working harder for their money. There's just a more of a consciousness toward entrepreneurs, new brands, indie brands. I think it's a fantastic thing. But I just think that it's going to mean that there's not quite as much room in the industry for everybody and that the brands that have kind of been, you know, releasing safe things and backing away from the important conversations on the internet are going to not necessarily lose customers because those customers are boycotting, but they're just going to lose customers because other brands are doing more basically. And I think that that's kind of what happened to Becca. I read this article on the BBC that seemed very just like out of touch to me because I really wanted to learn what was going on with this. I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to make this video, I'm at least going to read an article, you know, about what happened. And most people are just speculating. And these experts, you know, that apparently are the voice of our generation that they interviewed for this article, were talking about how because we've all been home for the past year, yes, it's been a year now, we're just not as into makeup. And that skincare is the new makeup. They cited Charlotte Tilbury putting out her skincare line ahead of, like reprioritizing it ahead of other makeup releases because she realized how popular skincare was becoming instead of makeup. And I just have to, at least for myself, disagree <laughs> with that assertion because I just think that I have gotten more into makeup, especially eye makeup, because it's the one part of your face that's not covered by a mask. And also makeup cheers me up. Skincare doesn't cheer me up. <laughs> Skincare doesn't make me feel put together. It's a means to an end, but I don't get excited about it. I found that to be kind of a cop out in terms of having a conversation that needs to be had around why people are gradually gradually losing interest in these brands that have been here for so long that they've, again, kind of been taken for granted. I think that the conversation needs to be around why people are moving more towards other makeup brands than why they're moving away from makeup in general, because I don't think that that's the case. Man, look at those brilliant eye brighteners. They're awesome and they don't crease. They're so beautiful. <sighs> Ow. I always call this clockwork orange eleganza. Little trick, you can always get it out from under your eyes once it dries with a spoolie. All right, I do have one more backup product to talk about today. And I did not think that this would still exist because the Volcano Goddess collection was about three many more years ago, but this is still on their website. I was shocked. This is the Volcano Goddess Molten Mauve Glow, Glow Gloss, Glow Gloss. And I found it in the move and I was like, huh. I mean, I never hated that. I just didn't remember having it. By the way, never found the makeup by Mario Lip Gloss. Absolutely no idea where that is. But yeah, I had the Volcano Goddess eyeshadow palette it was fine. The formula was really, really beautiful, actually. Their eyeshadow formula was gorgeous. <laughs> I do think that it's funny, though, when you talk about, uh, like, the past of Becca, right? I, me and Ted were talking about this, Buffalo Beauty Boy, about, like, their weird past with collabs. They've done, you know, like, the best friends collab with Khloe Kardashian and her best friend, Malika, that's her name. He's like, oh, the Chrissy Teigen collab, or, like, the first time that I ever even heard of Becca 
was the, probably the first time that I was like influenced on YouTube, which was to buy the Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop collab. And I was influenced by Leanne. And that was like, literally, I think like 2014 or something. So that's Molten Mauve. It's a little bit minty. It's really lightweight. And so it does have a little bit of a plumping thing to it. It's a very pretty color, uh, but it's a little bit thin. So you can feel the little glitter particles in it. And I'm shocked that it doesn't smell expired or anything like that because I've had it for a really long time. But uh, yeah, the Volcano Goddess eyeshadow palette, as I was saying, really, really pretty formula, but it was like a bunch of really pretty kind of like cool neutrals. And then it had three foils in it, these metallic foils. One was like bright gold, one was bright red, and one was like electric electric blue. I could not get those colors to perform for me at all. But I'm going to move you guys out and we will recap really quickly on uh, on these products. So this is the vibe today. This is my full face of, you know, Becca as much of it as I had and then filling in the blanks with other things. But let's talk about these products real quick. So the ones that I recommend, can you find them, would be Yes, the Becca Zero Virtual Foundation. Please understand that this is not for everybody, but a clear foundation is pretty cool. The Skin Love Foundation. It's really, really difficult to find, but if you can find it in your shade, I highly recommend it. And this is in the shade Linen that I have. I also really like this. It's not necessarily the world's greatest shimmer goo, but it is an effective shimmer goo. I think it's very pretty. So the Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint, I will continue using this. It's something that I reach for a lot more often than I expected to. I have this in the shade Luminary One. And the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector, I do have the light to medium shade. Again, this comes in two shades and is like castor oil based. It's very reflective and pretty. And as you can see, we didn't have to put on any any concealer or anything, this did the job for me. So um, if you are medium complected, the Hydra Mist might work for you, but I don't necessarily recommend it just because I don't think that it really works on that many skin tones and it does kind of lose its like wet feeling magic uh, pretty quickly. I just thought that this was funny to include. You know, I don't necessarily recommend it, but I just dug it out of my collection. I was like, wow, like this still exists. I think that that is the surprising thing but shouldn't be the surprising thing about when I went to do this video. I was searching through my stash and I found so many Becca products that I had never really like had a super strong opinion on. I like them. I do. And I think that their products, I mean, obviously, like this gave me this really, really beautiful blurred complexion look and their highlight and blush formula is just so dialed in and their complexion formulas are so, I mean, you know, take them or leave them depending on whether or not you're here for a clear foundation, but they are very effective. They do a really, really good job of what they set out to do. But there is something, and this I guess comes down to like advertising and brand identity, which is, you know, one of one of the hats that I, I put on in my, my videos from time to time. It's just that the way that they've kind of hammered out their role in the industry in the last few years has been one of iterating on what worked and assuming that what always worked for them was going to work for the present and for the future. And then people didn't really expect innovation from them. And so when they did innovate, it kind of felt like it was jumping the shark a little bit. And I think that that's why the companies who build community around their brand, while Yes, they are putting themselves in the short term more at risk for criticism. I do feel like that's a short term risk for a long term gain because it is the brands who are kind of forgettable that are gonna end up losing in the long term. It's less risky at this point to take a stance and be part of the conversation and to create a community around your brand than to stand on the sidelines and just kind of fade away. That's at least my personal take on this. I don't have any data to back that up, but that's how I would kind of guess this went just from my own personal perception of the brand. And like I said, I think that there are a lot of brands out there right now who have relied on a very like white constituency for a very long time. I'm not going to say that those brands are going to just disappear, but they should be concerned about reviving their brand identity to a new, more involved demographic. So anyway, 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Again, I'm going to try and hunt down as many of these as I can. I'm sorry if they're sold out. I can't believe how quickly everything is selling out. I don't know how they're going to keep anything in stock until September, but let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I know there are a lot of you who are going to really miss a lot of these products. I know that you guys have been really lamenting this uh, in DMs and tagging me and stuff like that. So it does suck that we are going to be losing these products, but we will try and kind of dupe them going forward. I'm sure that the vacuum will be filled with other products by newer brands and things like that at some point. So I'll keep my eye out for that. But yes, in the comments below, let me know what you think is the kind of like overall takeaway from this whole thing. And uh, if you did appreciate this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.